Boatworks today is sponsored by Total Boat and Alexia Yacht Coatings, as well as supported by the generosity from the beautiful folks over on Patreon. Thank you so much. So welcome back everybody. I hope you're all having a great weekend. My name is Andy with the Boatworks today. In this video, we're going to be continuing on with the pre-launch quick tips and tricks. And we're going to be talking about gel coat, but specifically uh, buffing compounds and which one I have found to be the best. So with that said, let's get started. So before we jump into this, I have a quick story which is going to be very relevant to what we're going to be talking about. Now, gel coats in general, they're not all created equal. Some are on the harder side of, of the spectrum, some are on the softer side of the spectrum. Now, in general, boats tend to fall, most boats tend to fall somewhere you know, kind of in the, in the middle there. Now, about three years ago, I was doing a, a, a project for an old customer that I've been working with for probably almost 15 years. And uh, he brought his boat in, which is a very nice boat, I think he was like two years old. And he's, he's one of those owners that was just very meticulous, always stayed on top of everything. So every spring he had the whole thing detailed and any little damages from the previous year were always taken care of. I mean, it just looked mwah, perfect all the time. Um, good customers to have, by the way. Now, he brought his boat in and I forget what, uh, what brand boat it was, but it was, it was a pretty nice boat. It was. Uh, a little bit of like a Swiss Army knife of boats because it was like kind of a ski boat but kind of a, a fishing boat also kind of like party party a <laughs> cocktail cruiser kind of a boat uh, but anyways it, it was a nice boat and it was pretty you know pretty much new but he brought it in he had some you know maybe about a dozen little chips and dings scratches you know that kind of thing just normal wear and tear I guess they use their boat quite a bit and brought it in for uh, on a Friday and I had said oh, okay this should be no problem pick it up on a Monday afternoon so got started and got the gel coat mixed up, uh, tinted, laid back down, came in the following day to go sand it all down. And the first area that I sanded, I, what I like to do is I like to, if I've got more than one area to do, I like to take one spot start to finish just so that I have a better idea of how high up in grits I need to actually sand, which compounds are going to actually polish it out the fastest, and you know, just that, that kind of thing. So I took the first spot, sanded it up to 1500. Again, just wanted to kind of find out, uh, go up to the top and then I can work my way down. So sanded it up to 1500 and polished it out with uh, a compound that I had been using for years. I mean, it literally at least 10 years. And that was the Meguiar's, the oxidation remover. You've seen me talk about this you know, in, in older videos. Uh, I love that stuff. Loved that stuff. So got the, uh, got the buffer all fired up, polished it out. And the gel coat that I laid in had polished out okay, but the, all the area surrounding it, meaning the original gel coat on the boat, the surrounding area, that didn't, even after taking it up to 1500. I went over it two, three, four times, and the, like I said, the patch that I went in came out nice and glossy, but all around there I had this, you could still see the scratch marks from 1500. So, brought it up to 2000. Same, same thing, polished it out and you could still see in the right angle, you could still see the fine, fine scratch marks from the uh, from this 2000 grit sandpaper. So, you know, I kind of dicked around with this for probably an hour, you know, on this one little spot, which is literally about this big. Could not get it to polish out. So I was getting a little frustrated. I came back over to the shop. I was doing this work over at my, uh, my neighbor's place here just because that's where, I'm, I'm not sure why, maybe I had other stuff going on in the shop here and I didn't have room to bring it in. But anyways, the boat was over at my neighbor's place. And so I came back over to my, to my shop, grabbed all the compounds that I had. You know, I'm like, damn it, I'm gonna find something that works because <laughs> you know, the clock's ticking, he's gonna be showing up here. So I grabbed everything, went back over, and I went through uh, like Aqua Buff and I grabbed some of the 3M uh, you know, the perfect it. I tried the 3M Finesse it. And I wasn't expecting a whole lot of those, those uh, two 3M products because they're primarily used on paint and they, when you feel them, they really don't have any kind of a grit to them. So, but hey, you know, I'm gonna try it. And nothing was working. And the last compound that I used was something that I had on the shelf, but I'd never used it before. And so I grabbed that and within 30 seconds, boom, perfect. The spot was absolutely pristine. I mean, and it, it was glossier than the rest of the, I mean, it, it's how it should be. I mean, it was just absolutely incredible. So I thought, all right, sweet. I found, I found the, uh, the, you know, the, 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 the right compound for this. So I went to the next, the second patch and I sanded that up to 1500. Boom, same thing. About 30 seconds of buffing and it was flawless. Hmm, all right, this is pretty cool. Went to the next spot, sanded that up to 1200. Bang, same thing. 
I'm like, this is incredible. Right? <laughs> How did I not you know, uh, think about using this stuff earlier? And uh, last slide, I think when it was all said and done, I was taking all the rest of the remaining areas up to about 1,000 grit. And then, you know, again, 30, 40 seconds of buffing, and boom, it was done. It was amazing. Now, I'm not going to tell you which product that was quite yet. Uh, I want to get these uh, panels prepped. And rather than you taking my word for it on how well this stuff worked, I'm going to show you. So with that said, let's lay down some gel coat. So now, as you can see here, I've got this panel essentially divided into three different sections here. And what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be sanding each section with a different grit paper. So right here, I've already got labeled. This is going to be done with 1,500. This is going to be done with 1,000. And this is going to be done with 800. Now, just to make sure that nobody thinks I'm going to be pulling any funny business, here is the paper that is 1,500 grit. You can see it's marked right there. That's going there. Here's 1,000, going here, and then finally, this is, which way is up? The 800. Now I'm gonna be wet sanding these down. Uh, I've just got a little a spray bottle here. If you're gonna be sanding gel coat, for, you know, if you're doing a repair or if you just have some deeper scuffs that need to be washed out or sanded out, uh, it's better to use a spray bottle than it is to use, uh, you know, say dip your, your paper into a bucket. Because what you're doing is you sand, you, you load up your paper with who knows what, you dip it back into your bucket, now you've washed all that stuff into the water. That water's supposed to be clean, so next time you come back in, when you start getting to your finer grit, you might accidentally pick up, you know, a nice little speck of sand. <laughs> and, and then sand, uh, you know, basically some 80 grit paper uh, into, uh, into your hull here, which was no good. So, use a spray bottle, and just for a little extra lube, I like to put some Dawn dish soap in here. All right, so let's take a look at how these sanded areas turned out here. Now, here's starting with the 1500. Now, I put a piece of tape here in the middle just so the camera has something to focus on, but hopefully you can kind of make that out there. So not too, not too big, maybe about the size of a, well, oversized softball. And then come in next door, there's a 1000 grit, and very similar deal going on there. 
and then lastly, D800. Now, when I'm buffing these out, essentially the 1500 grit, I would, I would expect pretty much any kind of compound, you know, more or less, any kind of compound to be able to take out 1500 grit. Uh, when you start getting to 1000, yeah, then it can get a little bit sketchy. You know, some of the really aggressive ones uh, might be able to do it, uh, but some of the, the more fine ones, you know, just won't. And then when you get, when you get to 800, uh, not really. I mean, maybe, no, not really. <laughs> <laughs> not, but not, not without using a compound that's so aggressive, you're going to have to come back over top of it with another compound to remove those, uh, you know, those swirl marks from the buffer. Now, the compound I'm going to be using for this is that made by Total Bow. It's their Total Buff. All right, so to get started here, I'm going to tackle the, uh, the 1500 grit spot first. And because it's been sitting on the shelf for a little bit, yeah, just give it a quick little shake. Now, as far as how much compound I'm actually going to be putting on the pad, uh, well, Kind of just a, a light line right around the, the border of it here. And the important thing to prevent, you know, when you turn, turn this thing on, all the compounds just going slinging all over the place, just give it a quick massage. You'll thank me later. <laughs> and the speed I'm going to be running this at is fairly slow. I guess I don't know what the exact RPM is. Uh, but it's pretty slow. On a scale of, what, one to, uh, one to six, I'm running it at a two. So I don't know. You can look up what the, uh, what the RPM specs are for the, for the Festool uh, buffer here, but I'm running it on number two, which is fairly slow. Okay, now as expected, the 1500 I mean, it, it, it polished right out. Now, I realize it does look a little bit funky. Hopefully, I can catch it in the, in the glitter here. But this surface, like I said, it's not dead flat. There's a bunch of little ripples here from when I was brushing the gel coat on. I didn't bother flattening this entire panel just because, well, <laughs> I just didn't see the point. But no scratches. Again, 1500, that's to be expected. Now, let's move on to the 1000. So here on the 1000 grit patch, uh, which is right here, again, I'm trying to get the best angle. If there's a flaw here, I want to be able to show it on camera, but there just isn't. Well, other than the texture of the surface. <laughs> All the sanding marks are, uh, are gone, and that was a 1000 grit. Now this, uh, this just almost made it, makes it too easy here. Here's the area right in through here. And again, this was 800 grit. Far, far from a, an actual finishing grit, typically on, a, on a, any kind of a gel coat repair. But there isn't a single, let me keep my finger here for focus. There isn't a single scratch anywhere. It's just gone. All right, now, now I'm really curious. Uh, I want to see what this stuff can really do. Uh, let's try some 600, maybe 400. There's no way it's going to take 400, but we'll, let's give 600 a try. And just so nobody thinks I'm playing games here. Uh, focus, where are you? There you go, 600. And I'm just gonna I'm gonna go back over the area that I first hit with uh, 1500 grit. See if we can knock that down just a little bit flatter. Well, now actually, I'm gonna do two spots. All right, I'm gonna hit 600 grit on the the thousand grit area, and then 400 grit over here. Now I'm gonna be perfectly honest. I'm not expecting a whole lot out of either one of these two grits, but. We shall find out. Okay, four hundred grit. All right, 
I'm gonna let this, let the water kind of evaporate off of here for a few minutes and I'll be right back and see, uh, see how this goes. And we're back. Okay, now, <laughs> I tell you, I, I'm not gonna hold my breath on this one just because they are such coarse grits that we were trying to finish with, but like I said, let's see what happens. That's just stupid. <laughs> okay, this is just ridiculous. All right, so this this is six hundred. Again, I'm trying to find any kind of a blemish in here with the glare, but there just isn't any. All right, I don't care who you are. You got to admit that's pretty damn impressive. Now I'm kind of curious what's going to happen with the 400. <laughs> There's still some very, very faint scratch marks in here, but I'd be willing to bet that if I hit this again, they'd be gone. Let me see if I can show you what it, what it looks like when there's still some scratches left. Okay, now again, this was this area that was sanded with 400 grit. Let me, I'm gonna have to crank this in. Where are you? Okay, I, again, I don't know if this is gonna even pick up. But they're so, so faint. Some areas are gone. But there's just a very, very faint scratch pattern still left in the, uh, in the surface here. Uh, I'm going to try hitting this one more time. <laughs> They're gone. You gotta be shitting me. And if you don't believe me, here we go. All right, I just gotta say, what impresses me about this stuff is that when you feel it, you know, you rub it, uh, you know, rub it through your fingers here. I mean, you can feel that there's a little bit of grit in there, but it's, it's really, really fine. And somehow, I mean, there, there are other compounds I felt. It almost feels like you're, you're rubbing like sandpaper <laughs> through your fingers. Uh, but this stuff is, yeah, like I said, it, it has a grit, but it's a very, very fine grit. But yet somehow, it's able to uh, take out evidently 400 grit with two swipes, granted two swipes, or two, uh, you know, two rounds of buffing it out, but it's, it's aggressive enough to take out 400 grit, 600 grit with just a single pass, but yet go all the way up to 1500 without leaving you any swirl marks. That's, that's a very rare thing. Usually compounds are able to do one or the other, not both. Uh, usually, w w which is why a lot of companies, they'll have like an actual compound and then a finishing compound or uh, yeah, yeah, compound and then finishing compound. You know, it's, it, so you'll, you'll use the coarse stuff for actually removing the majority of the scratches, but then the compound itself, because it's so coarse, it leaves behind swirl marks. And then you've got to follow up with another product, uh, like a swirl remover or what, yeah, it depends on how they label, it depends on the company. But basically, it's just a super fine, or essentially a polishing compound that removes those swirls. Um, whereas this stuff, it's, it's a one and done. And if you remember, I just kind of remember this. This is the compound that I used uh, earlier this year, or no, last year, when I was doing the Alexio demonstrations. 
Um, I tried a bunch of different compounds. I tried the 3M, the Perfected, this stuff. I tried the, their Finesset. I tried some of the, um, well, some of the Meguiar's. That was a disaster. But the only, and none of them worked. The only one that worked was this. So yet it's aggressive enough to take out four 600 grit paper or grit uh, sanding marks, but yet you can, you can also use it up on Alexial. Now, I don't know that I would use this on, say, like Allcraft, because Allcraft is a very, it, it's a fairly soft paint comparatively. Um, but Alexial, you know, being a, a bit harder, uh, this stuff worked fantastic. So you can, <laughs> this is just dumb, but impressive. I'll give them that. So on that note, I think I'm going to quit while I'm ahead. Now, before I close this out, uh, two things. First one, the, the good folks over at Soft Sand Rubber, uh, you know, the guys that make the, the, the non-skid particles that I really, really like, uh, they are, they've given me a discount code for 10% off of your online orders. So I, or you may even be able to use it if you call in, too. I'm not quite sure. Uh, but it's 10% discount. The uh, discount code is BWT10. And their website is softsandrubber.com. And I'll have all this information down below in the, in the description. And the, uh, the second thing is, if this is something you celebrate, happy Easter. I've got two very anxious little girls waiting for me to get home uh, and stay home this weekend. So uh, I'd wish the weather and the circumstances were a little bit better. It'd be nice to be able to take them and get them out of the house. But it is what it is. Trying to do our part, I guess. Um, so on that note, yeah. So I hope you enjoyed the video. And if you did, please hit the thumbs up button. If you're not already subscribed, hit that subscribe button and the notification bell. I would appreciate it. Thank you in advance. Uh, if you have any questions, comments, please leave those down below. And as always, thank you for your time. Thanks for watching. Give this compound a try on your boat. You will not be disappointed. And I'll see you next week. This has been a Boatworks Today protection.